Today we'll be looking at the longest line of consecutive 1 in matrix. We're given a 0, 1 matrix M. Find the longest line of consecutive 1 in the matrix. The line can be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, or anti-diagonal. And we, we have an example. So if we look here at the horizontal and vertical, we have length 2 and then the diagonal. Here we have length 3. In the anti-diagonal, we have length 2. So we see the greatest, longest line is the diagonal of length 3. What we notice is as we calculate the longest line, each one has four possibilities. It could be counted as a horizontal, vertical, diagonal, or anti-diagonal. So from this idea, we can store for each position an array with four elements, and that array with four elements, uh, that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, where each of the elements represents a direction that it could form a line. What we also notice is that if we cache the positions row by row, so for instance here, for this row we store all the possibilities for the four directions, the next row can get the best line including what the results were from the previous row. So an example is following our idea. We have the four elements for every single element in the first row. And each row will be looking at the previous row. So we have this called previous row. We'll call it DP. And this one will be the previous. And then DP will be the new row. So the previous row is 0, simply because when we look at the first row, there's no row before that. And we look at the first element. So we could write the indices to help understand this code a little bit more. These indices indicate the ith element in the row. So right now we're on row 1, which is here. And we see the first element is a 0. So we do not, we cannot update any of these horizontal, vertical, diagonal, anti-diagonal positions because there's no 1. Then we look at the next element and we see that there is a 1. So we look for what horizontal element we could have. And when you are doing horizontal calculations, you look in the current row, and you look in the column before it. In the column before it, we have 0. And there's a 0, so we add 1 to it, because this current element in 1 can be used as a horizontal line. Then for vertical, we look in the same column, but from the previous row. And in the previous row, because it's the first row, it will be 0. So 0 plus 1 also yields 0. Then we look at, oh, I see. I was off by 1. So now we look at the diagonal. And the diagonal is what is on the top left corner. And because it's the first row, we'll have 0. And same thing for the anti-diagonal, where the anti-diagonal is on the top right corner. But because there's no previous row, it would still just be 1. Now when we go to the second element, we see there's a 1. And we look at the previous column, just like before. And there is a 1 in the 0th position, so now it becomes 2. For vertical, we look at the previous row. And just the fact that we're in the first row, it would just equal 1. Then diagonal, anti-diagonal, similarly, also equal 1. And then the last column, all the elements are 0, because the last third element is a 0. Now that we finished our DPN, we will save this DPN as the previous row, and then we'll initialize another another zero array to continue calculating for the rest of the matrix. Now we're on the second row. 
and in the second row we see a zero so we don't update make any updates then we see a one and so for horizontal we look at the previous column and there's nothing there so zero plus one is one and then we look at vertical we keep the same column but we look in the previous and we see there's something in the previous row so it's two and now diagonal top left corner we see there's a zero so it's zero plus one which is one and the anti-diagonal there is a one and so our answer will be one plus one which is two and we see that it is indeed true that it should be two now when we move to the second element we look at the previous element which is one plus one and now it's two and in the vertical we look at the same column and of the previous row, 1 plus 1, 2. Diagonal, we look at the top left and there is a 1, so it's 1 plus 1, 2. And then anti-diagonal, we look at the top right, there's nothing there, so it's simply just 1. Now, just like before, we replace dpn with dp, so we are using this for the next row. And we initialize this to all zeros. So we can calculate the last row. So when we see the last row, the last three elements are all zeros, so we don't update any of those. We just look at the last element, which is a 1. And we see here, horizontal, there's nothing there, so 0 plus 1, 1. Vertical, we look at the same column and there's nothing in the previous row, so it's 1. Now the diagonal, we look at the top left, and there is a 1, so it becomes 3, because the value cached is a 2. So now we have 3. And the antidiagonal is 1 plus 0, because there's nothing on the top right. So now we see that the maximum is 3, and then it's for a diagonal, which looks correct. and we went through a lot of cases here, and I'm confident that these cases are good, so let's write the main idea and begin the code. So one thing is, the, one of the base cases, not base cases, but one case is an empty m. That case, we return 0. Another, the other case is a case we have where it's non-empty m. And we see that we need to make a make a DP array. We want to store the max max line. We'll call it max v. Then we want to iterate all rows each time making a DPN and update. Then we set dp equal to dpn, and we repeat. Then return the max v. So empty, m is empty. We return 0. So now we have the case where it's non empty m, and we'll make a dp array. So first get the number of columns. And we'll store of a max v variable equals zero. Iterate all the rows. Each time we'll make a DPN. And then we'll iterate through each of the columns. And we'll be updating the DPN. Now one thing to note is we only update if there's one in the original matrix. And so we need to check that there it does indeed exist in one. And then We set in the top, the horizontal vertical, diagonal, anti-diagonal, 
helps a little bit to move it down just so we can see. Okay, so if we want to update the horizontal, it would be J because of the column and it's the zero. And we said that horizontal we look in the previous column. Now we would not want to use the previous because if we use the previous it contains the results that can be from a different results from a different uh, direction. So we use we look at the previous row in DPN. And we add one because the current element is a one, so it could be included in the line. Then we are going to take a look at vertical. And vertical, we said before, it looks in the current column. And we'll add one because the current element can be used. And then for diagonal, it's the top left corner, so we need to look at one column to the left and then two for the direction. One thing to know is we need to make sure it's in pounds. So if the J is greater than zero, we know that it's possible we would not index out of bounds. But if it is out of bounds, then we'll just have a diagonal of one where this current element will start. And now last but not least, we do the anti-diagonal. And the anti-diagonal is from the top right corner, so we'll do j plus 1. The direction is 3. That's where we designated the position. And like the diagonal, we also have to check that this is inbound. So we need to make sure that the j is less than the number of columns. Otherwise, we will not be able to do plus 1. And now we calculate what the maximum is. We cache the maximum, and the, each element in the column will contain the best, for that direction, the longest line. And after we are done with each Row. After we're done with each row, we have to update the. We have to store the new DP as the previous DP so that the next row can reuse this. And last but not least, we must return the max. Here's where we're updating it, so let's put the comment there. Now turn the max. Alright, looks like DP is used before referenced. Ah, I see. Looks like I did not make the DP array in the beginning, so make a DP array. Right, I missed the comment. So DP equals zero times four for each L. See that's so we check the case. If it's empty, then return zero. We make a DP array which stores the previous, made similarly as DPN. And then we check the length, so we have the number of columns and we have max V to store the longest line. We iterate through, making a new DP, and then we check if it, their element has one in the matrix. If it does, then we do our updates. L reference before site. I see. Okay. 
be careful with Chucky, these variables. So, looks like M is up here, so that is checks out. And then the L let's see what the length of the number of columns. And then we use range L bands right there. Then I have DP, then I have max V. I'm setting that M. Yep, it says in the function. And then L, I have defined L, DPN. J, L, yep, those are all defined. This is from the function and the DPN. Yes, I have defined this here. These are all DP because they are using the previous rows, except for the horizontal. You have to use the current row. That's why that's DPN. And then max V, ah, here. It's got to be capital V. That looks good to me. No, this is the column. So if I'm using plus one column. Oh, right. SPL minus one. Oh, okay. So that looks weird. All right, looks like the submission is good. All right, well, that was me doing the consecutive longest line of consecutive one in matrix. I hope you guys were able to learn something and since this is a DP problem the question of the day is what's your favorite uh, DP problem? Yeah please leave a comment below.